Cornflakes this morning. We're also choking over our cornflakes after the front page splash in the sun. Exclusive Hancock's affair with aid. Health Secretary's fling during COVID. He hired uh, Gina uh, Colladangelo, 43 years old, who happened to be at university with uh, last year, uh, during some well, it was rather lack of lack, lack of scrutiny from the normal system for hiring people. Uh, she's now uh, well, paid by taxpayers and uh, has a non-executive directorship of the uh, health the, uh, department. Let's talk about this now with uh, Harry Cole, political editor of The Sun, who joins us. Good morning to you, Harry. Morning, Julia. Um, it's an extraordinary story, I have to say. I did almost choke on my tea when I saw it this morning. Um, I mean, it brings a new meaning to the idea of hands, face, space, doesn't it? Uh, stay home, protect your marriage might be the advice the uh, health secretary might want to give at the next press conference. Um, this story, how significant is it? Very significant, obviously, for his marriage and hers, both married with three children. But how significant is it for us ordinary readers and listeners? Well, I think you can judge how significant we think it is, given the due problems we've given it in our paper tomorrow, uh, today. Even Sorry, it was a long day yesterday. <laughs> um, <laughs> look, his, his marriage is, is his marriage, but there is important public interest questions here. Um, Miss Connor Delingo was a university friend hired in, in uh, what could be described as unusual circumstances at the height of the pandemic. She uh, is on the taxpayers' payroll. This affair appears to have been conducted on government property uh, in Mr Hancock's office, in office hours, um, at a time when official government advice was telling people to stay apart from those not in their household. So, look, I... They're saying it's a private matter. I don't think that's true. And I think there's some very awkward questions facing the, the health secretary. Yes, indeed. I mean, just stay on, on that issue for once. We are being told, you know, yeah, hands face space. Um, and I don't think space does involve um, uh, staff's bottoms, which is what he appears to have his hand on uh, at the time. And, and this is the thing. We've all been told we have to obey these rules. Lots of people are really terrified. You know, we've been back in the office here at Talk Radio. Everyone, everyone here, well, most people working throughout because uh, uh, there was no choice. You can't put a radio station on without people being in the office. But people obeying those rules, that two metre rule and the one metre rule, all the glass per spec screens. And meanwhile, we, we know behind the, the door of number 10 and clearly behind the door of the health department as well, well, these rules are just being ignored, which suggests not only an idea of one rule for them, one rule for us, but but also that, that they don't think the rules are necessary. Well, I think I think it's a matter for the public to decide whether he thinks breaking the rules. These often these things are a slight grey area in terms mm. of guidance, uh, rather than being explicitly outlawed. Yeah. Uh, people being told to use their best their best. Uh, their best thoughts on what to do. Uh, I think the I think the issues of public probity, the yeah. issues of use of taxpayers' money, the fact that um, Mr. Hancock has had a, a fairly rough um, few weeks already will um, be, I think, be slightly more of a concern to his immediate career yes, prospects. Indeed. It, it, well, well, let's talk. It, let's talk about the probity aspect here because this is a woman who is a millionaire lobbyist. Uh, she's uh, at Luther Pendragon a Communications Firm. She's also a director of Oliver Bonus. Just happens to be the the firm that her husband also a millionaire uh, set up director of communications what on earth was she brought into the department of health to do um, she was brought in uh, without the usual processes uh, of selection going through uh, uh, for a six month contract then last september uh, she was appointed uh, as a, a non executive director and is now a board member of the department of health um what qualifications what experience does this woman purport to have that means that she should be a board member of the Department of Health. I mean, for political nerds like myself, it's been interesting to see exactly how these non-executive directors have started to be used. You know, uh, ministers are quite constrained in the number of special advisors they're allowed, people that can give them political advice, people that can, uh, you know, can be, be their sort of uh, you know, right-hand man or woman on a day-to-day -day basis outside of the normal civil service uh, uh, sort of recruitment process. And the last few years, these non-executive directors of government departments have always become sort of extensions of ministerial offices, which is not what they're there for. They're meant to be there to oversee the work and scrutinise the, the work of government departments as a sort of check and balance. And that's clearly been fudged in this case because, um, you know, it, you can see from the pictures yourself, it's far <laughs> from scrutiny to me.
<laughs> no, no, well, no, indeed. And it all it all sort of just goes into this whole idea of this chemocracy, isn't it? This uh, Matt Hancock apparently you know, giving a contract uh, for for PPE and the like to to, to somebody you know who, who works at his local pub and, and things like that. There's this idea that that you know if you just happen to know Matt, you're a university with him. Here's some taxpayers' money. That's the problem with this one. It, it, it is not the first allegation made that he has been uh, careless, should we say, with with taxpayers' money. You mentioned the infamous case of his uh, of his former pub landlord, his local neighbour, who approached him on WhatsApp and mysteriously got given a uh, a contract to make COVID tests. You've got um, you know these vast amounts, millions and millions of pounds spent on PPE, which. Uh, all of the budget, budgetary watchdogs have said was bad value for money. Yes, it was the height of a pandemic. Yes, they were throwing the kitchen sink at doing everything. But when you've got sort of, you know, VIP fast lanes for Tory donors and various other things, these things, this money needs to be justified. It needs to be spent. And the problem is, is the, the allegations just sort of mount up and mount up. Yeah. There's been the extraordinary diatribe against Mr. Hancock, accusing him of being a liar by, by Dominic Cummings. Hancock, to, to be fair, has said to Mr. Cummings, show us the evidence, put up or shut up. Uh, and we're yet to see any sort of definitive smoking gun on that. But, you know, it is, it is, the allegations are mounting up. And I do think that the government's line this morning that this is a private matter and that's that, um, I think stretches all bounds of credibility. Yes. I wonder whether the Queen will be saying once again that poor man about Matt Hancock. I imagine uh, not many women would be saying that about for, him for, for the For the defence, you know, he has had an astonishing year. It has been an unprecedented pandemic. He has, you know, no one's suggesting that he's somehow been shirking uh, at, the, at the height of it. But um, Can I just say, Harry, on behalf of married women everywhere, if my husband tried that excuse... It wouldn't go down very well. I've had a hard year. I, I imagine I imagine he's having some hard conversations, not just with number 10 today. Indeed. Well, as, as one wagger on Twitter pointed out to us a little bit earlier, brings a new meaning uh, to the uh, phrase, come forward and get your jab, doesn't it? Harry <laughs> Cole, political editor of The Sun, thank you very much for joining us.